the highway. The exhaust on the Honda Element was getting pretty loud. When I checked underneath, I discovered the front exhaust flange was rusted almost all the way through. But that wasn't the source of the noise. So into the garage it went to find out what was making the car so loud. There were rust spots along the whole exhaust system. But there were no obvious problems until getting to the rear muffler. The flange on the last segment had rusted away on both sides, leaving the tailpipe to be a noisy, dangling doodad. The half of the flange that was still connected to the muffler was too badly rusted to even connect up to a new tailpipe. I ordered a new tailpipe and three pieces of hardware to help install it. When the new tailpipe arrived, I started by wiping it down and then painting it with a coating of black, high temperature paint to prevent future rusting. I also ordered an exhaust gasket, flange repair kit, and a spring bolt kit. The rusted flange needed to be cut back with a rotary tool, and whenever you are cutting or hammering on things, it is time for safety glasses. There is so much rust and dirt underneath, just wear the safety glasses anyway. You don't need that junk in your eyes. The flange kit is actually pretty ingenious, made up of stamped and welded parts. It consists of half brackets connected by bolts that complete a two inch circle clamp, the perfect size for this tailpipe segment. Being split in two pieces allows it to be attached to an exhaust pipe that you can't simply slide a one piece flange onto. The kit comes with two bolts and their nuts and lock washers and because they are all zinc plated, I didn't paint them. When I attached the flange to the pipe, I tightened it just enough to keep it from sliding around, but still loose enough to rotate it later when lining up the mounting holes on the new tailpipe. The nut and bolt are both 13 millimeter. The old rubber hanger was undamaged, so I just reused it. It attaches to the body by this hook on the frame rail. I applied spray lubricant to ease putting it on. With the high temperature paint now dry, it was time to slide the new tailpipe in. It goes over the sway bar and then lines up with the muffler flange. Putting the back end of the pipe into the rubber hanger takes the weight off and it makes aligning the parts much easier. Rotating the new flange, lined it up with the tailpipe, and I then tightened it down snugly. A 13 millimeter socket on the bolt and a 13 millimeter box wrench on the nut does the trick. The new exhaust gasket goes between the tailpipe and the muffler. The spring bolts are designed to give both tension and flexibility to the connection. Getting those springs compressed enough to attach the nuts needed some locking pliers. Longer bolts would have made this much easier. Finally, with the spring fully compressed, the threaded portion of the bolt pokes through far enough to get the nut started. I got both bolts started and then alternated cranking them down until I got a tight seal. The springs are fully compressed, making the joint extremely tight. Like I said, longer bolts might have been better. I kept the old chrome trim piece for the new tailpipe and attached it with a new bolt. And there it is! A new tailpipe from the muffler back, completed with flange repair kit number one. Now to tackle the almost failed front flange behind the catalytic converter. The lower bolt has totally given up. The flange on the center pipe is actually still okay. Introducing flange repair kit number two. The kit comes with plates, springs, bolts, spacers, but no nuts or lock washers.
Having seen the original bolts rust out so badly, I decided to upgrade the fasteners for this flange kit to a larger, one inch longer, grade eight yellow zinc plated set with nuts and lock washers. These are much stronger and much more rust resistant. The interlocking half circle steel stampings are not plated and that makes them perfect candidates for a coating of high temperature black paint. Let's get that applied now. The lower bolt is so weakened by rust, I can actually remove it by twisting it off with a pair of locking pliers. And off it comes, leaving behind a clean mounting hole on the pipe flange side. This second kit is for 1 and 7 8 inch diameter, and it fits the pipe here perfectly. I don't have a reciprocating saw, so a simple hacksaw blade will help get what is left of the top bolt removed. This old rusty fastener turns out to be a lot tougher than it looks. Finally, I had weakened it enough to just pry it apart with a large flat blade screwdriver. And it's time for the rotary tool to cut back the worst parts of the old flange. Next, I inserted the upper bolt and spring combination to start hanging the flat stampings on. They interlock with the raised lip facing forward towards the catalytic converter. The longer 4-inch bolts mean I don't have to compress the springs with pliers. I needed to add a spacer behind each nut, but some thick washers would work here too. Next is a lock washer and nut. Ninety-nine percent of my tools are metric, and these new bolts were SAE size. The closest I had were 5 8 inch and ratcheting 18 millimeter wrenches. This was the tedious part. There just isn't a lot of room here to swing those wrenches, and I had to contort my hands a little bit to get the tools up on the top bolt. I again alternated between the top and bottom bolts to pull the connection together evenly. Yes, power tools would speed this up if you have them and can get them to fit in this tight space. And there it is. One brand new upgraded rust resistant do-it-yourself flange repair for our Honda Element catalytic converter. Not all the original hardware was rusted. The springs were in actually pretty good shape. It was the bolts that were so scary. They worried me about the thin looking bolts that came supplied with the kit. I do feel much better using the higher quality fasteners for my repair job, and I think they will last a lot longer. It's time to put away the tools, move the car out, clean up the library, and get back on the roads of adventure. This video was made possible by subscribers like you. Thank you.